G'day, welcome to Astro Biological Porridge Life Porridge Life Ben, what the heck are you talking about? I don't know, well, let's go check out the Goldilocks Zone Life, as I like to remind you, is really special. Here on Earth, life exists only because certain conditions are met. Today, we'll consider water. Everything needs it, but it only exists as liquid at the surface here on Earth. Big deal, right? Well, it is actually. Check out the sun. Giver of life, driver of climate. Pumping out some pretty respectable energy, but how much? 384.6 yotta watts per second. Yotta water? One yotta watt equals 10 with 26 zeros after it. Brutal! But the sun, after all that, is a pretty average star. Nothing special about it, really. So there's plenty of sunlight for everyone. Could other planets benefit from the sun's golden goodness the way we do? Let's take a look at the inner planets. They're the ones we're talking about in this video today. Let's say uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. The rocky planets, the so-called terrestrial planets. Mercury is 58 million kilometers from the sun. That's really close. This close proximity has turned Mercury's surface into an oven. Well, liquid water couldn't possibly last. So, let's visit next in line, Venus. Venus is similar to Earth in composition, gravity, and size. Long ago, Venus might have had oceans just like Earth. But again, the planets closer to the sun and other factors saw all that water disappear into space. So, Venus is actually the hottest place in the solar system. Definitely no liquid water there anymore. Want to know more about what happened to Earth's twin? This guy and I made a video. Ah, uh, Earth. Beautiful Earth. Our home. Uh, everything's home, actually. 80% of Earth's surface is covered by liquid water. There's so much of this stuff here that our bodies are mostly made of it. It's absolutely everywhere, even locked up deep in the Earth's crust. Bad enough for Earth. We've all been there, right? Next planet out, Mars. The cool planet. Everybody wants to go there. Everyone who's everyone. Pity so damn cold though. Liquid water may exist here in tiny amounts, but uh, most of the red planet's water is locked up as ice or permafrost uh, just below its surface. Plenty there for future colonists, but nothing readily available for Martian life, so pity. It's a beautiful planet. Just ask Matt Damon. He'd know. So yeah, okay, what is the gold luck zone then, Ben? Get to the point, okay? Here's the inner solar system. Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Let's visit a special guest who can explain the gold luck zone for us a little bit. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Astro Astronomical with your host, Chef Ben. Say hello, Ben. Now let's pretend that these three balls of porridge represent Venus, Earth, and finally, we're waiting. Ben, hello. Ah, oh, there it is. This last one is the planet Mars. Now, let's try its bowl. Here's Chef Ben. Let's try Venus. Oh dear! Hospitalization, anybody? Moving on. Let's try Mars. What's that? What have we found, Chef Ben? Oh dear. An ice cube? That's a tad cold. No, thank you. Let's try Planet Earth. Hmm. Bit worried. Here goes. Actually, not bad at all. Good job, Chef Ben.
Nice work, Chef. Good job. So what you're saying is that if Earth was a bottle of porridge, it would be the one that God Logs ate. The one that was just right. It's that simple, really. Earth is lucky enough to be at the perfect distance from the sun, where water likes to slosh around in liquid form. Things would be a lot different here if that wasn't the case. So that's it for now. A simple but important piece of information, the Goldilocks zone. How am I going so far? If you thought I was, you know, okay, then subscribe for more. If you thought this video was useful to you, then give it a like. Big thumbs up. Likes help the channel get noticed. That little notification bell, there, there, wherever it is. It's just a thing if you want to see more. Go on, you know you want to. Thanks for watching Astrobiological, giving you the universe in plain human. Ciao.